the Dun Jane Doe, identified as Victoria Dolores Miha Paredes. In July of 1999, a man was out riding his ATV in a wooded area near Dunn, North Carolina. It was here that they found the remains of a woman who had likely been there for a couple of months. This was described as being about 100 yards from the Inez labor camp. In North Carolina, there are reportedly many different labor camps where the itinerant farm workers stay. One study concluded that poor housing conditions exist but are often hidden in the area, so there's a lot of farm worker labor camps. They need these people to come in and work the land, but there's really no place for them to stay. It reportedly increases farm worker vulnerability, adding that agriculture itself in that area can be a hazardous job. However, the job industry is dependent on migrant workers who come in. But of course, the workers need to work and the industry itself relies on these workers. And because they're hidden, usually these camps are pretty hazardous. And in this case, it was off a road ironically titled Easy Street. Because this area has people coming and going, it was nearly impossible to identify her. Additionally, they would say that it was known that escort workers would sometimes come to the camp. So they didn't know if she was someone who'd been staying there, if she was a partner of someone working in the area, or if she had come there for that reason and something happened to her. There were unfortunately a lot of what-ifs and they weren't able to identify her at all. Her COD was a slashed throat. She had no identification found near her, nor could they ever discover her identity. They believed she was either not quite an adult or as old as 24 with long red hair. They obtained DNA and fingerprints, but there was no match. And of course, it doesn't help that a lot of these people in these camps were from other countries. Some here legally and others not. And of course, for those who are not, missing people aren't generally reported. The police tracked down missing person reports for decades in trying to identify her as a cold case. They would eventually reach out to the Sampson County Sheriff, and a grant would eventually help provide genetic genealogy. Eventually, the Kinfinder group was hired to do the genetic search, and the DNA testing itself was done by Astria Forensics. They would begin the process in January of 2022, with the identification not happening until August of 2023. These cases always take a long time when trying to work through the DNA when there aren't close matches in genetic genealogy. They approach someone who's on that tree, who sends them to somebody else, another test is done, and they keep working their way forward. The DNA itself came from a hair sample in this case. They would come across the surname of Paredes, which I'm sorry, I'm probably saying wrong, eventually identifying a family from Honduras with several members that were now located inside of the U.S. As they worked it, they came across a parent-child match between our Jane Doe and a young woman who would eventually be identified as the daughter of Victoria and her daughter by this time was living in a home in California. We know now that Victoria was just 21 and still living in Honduras with her family in 1999. She began a relationship with Fiardo Meza, and the two had this daughter who would eventually help identify her mom. It would turn out that he was living in a small town in North Carolina, Rose Hill, that had just over a thousand people, and he arranged for Victoria to come to the United States and at some point they would have a child. It's not clear exactly who raised her child, but it was not the boyfriend. He would actually go back to Honduras in April of 2000. Her family was frantic, and they kept begging him to tell them what happened to Victoria. But all he would say is that she left him, and he didn't know where she was. Complicating matters, he would pass away himself in Honduras around 2000 or 2001. Victoria was never reported missing, probably because she wasn't in the U.S. legally and her family didn't want to cause trouble. It's unfortunately a common theme, and there's a lot of people here in the U.S. that are from other countries that have not been identified. The picture of Victoria shown here was not enhanced by me. I do use an AI program sometimes, but this one did a better job, probably, than mine does. But at the same time, it's probably not quite accurate. It sort of depicts what it feels the features would be, so it's always a little bit off. For some reason, the sheriff's office doesn't have her listed as foul play and isn't naming the boyfriend, although he's already passed, so maybe it doesn't matter. But that said, someone clearly took her life, and it's unfortunate it's not listed as such. But anyone with any information on this case still is urged to call the Sampson County Sheriff's Office 
at 910-592-4141. Victoria went unidentified for 24 years, three years longer than she got to spend on this earth. Had she lived the life she deserved, she would be 45 years old today. The Pend Oriel County John Doe, identified as Randall Reed Priborski. This is a video I covered before, and I'm going to run it now and then do an update. It's a short video, not even two minutes, but it explains how he was found. Pend Oriel County John Doe, Pend Oriel County, Washington. A man was found in December of 2014 in a remote wooded area of Washington state inside of a tent. If they know what happened, it wasn't released, so it was likely natural. He had on a blue Jansport backpack, a red sleeping bag. He had some toothpaste, nail clippers, deodorant, just general items of self-care. He had a thick blue and red watch cap and aviator glasses. He wore a size 3XL, a plaid button-up faded glory t-shirt, and pants that were sized 48 by 30. He had on military-style boots with a steel toe in a size 8. They described his face as being asymmetrical, saying there were other signs of health abnormalities that may have caused discomfort, although it's not listed as exactly what that meant. Even his age isn't very clear. He is listed as age pre-70, which would mean he was born essentially in 1945 or sooner. It appears his hair color is also unknown. The Pend Oriel County John Doe has gone unidentified for eight years. Thanks to Othram Labs, we finally know his name is Randall Reed Proborski, and we now know that he hadn't contacted his family since 2003, but he was last seen in 2008. His remains were found in 2014. Randall's father was a widower, and he had remarried Randall's stepmom years earlier. His father, Robert, passed away in 1998 at the age of 73. His father's obituary lists Randall as living in Mesa, Arizona at the time. By 2000, when his stepmother passed, he was living in Sioux City, Iowa. However, he ended up in a tent in Washington, and we don't know why. His last known sighting was in Old Town, Ohio. Randall had two brothers. One brother, Ray, would himself pass just 10 days after Randall's identification was announced on August 7, 2023. Raymond's obituary is shown here. He lists the date of death for Randall as 2009. What's so sad about this is people so easily pass themselves without knowing what happened to the person they've been searching for. I hope for the one remaining brother, this provides at least a small amount of peace. His exact age isn't given, so I'm not even sure how old he would be today. Randall likely passed away 14 years ago, and he went unidentified for nine years. Thank you everyone so much for watching and listening. If you aren't subscribed, please take a moment to do so, hitting the bell so you are notified of new videos. And thank you all for leaving comments and emojis to help with engagement. It all pushes the channel to get suggested to new people. And I appreciate that so much. Take care of yourselves and each other.